Hi, everyone, and warm welcome to our webinar, Digital Learning as the New Norm, Empowering Educational Institutions Amidst COVID-19. Today, we are joined by digital transformation experts as they share best practices in remote learning from around the globe. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce our three guests. We are joined by Dr. Ronnie Birchmore, the Education Channel Director for Microsoft. She leads the Education Transformation Strategy for the Microsoft Education Partner Ecosystem in Asia. We also have TechOne co-founder and CEO Lars Jepsen, who has over three decades of robust experience as a business leader and technology strategist. And last but definitely not the least, Anadoc CTO and co-founder Wasantha Urakune, who is a prominent business leader in Sri Lanka and is an expert in digital transformation technologies covering content services, automation, and data and AI. Now, how is everyone doing today? Everyone good? Thank you. Doing great. Thank you, Ara. Doing great. Great. Thank you, Ara. It's, that's great to hear. Now we have an exciting 45 minutes ahead of us, so let's jump in. Now, my first question is for all three of you. Now, when COVID-19 hit and lockdowns and community quarantines took effect, what immediate effects were seen in the global education system? What are what are the gaps? What are the impacts in the in the entire industry? Um. I will give uh, Rani and Vasanta a little time to think and just give a little bit of my story. Uh, so I was traveling in the US on the first week of March and uh, everything was pretty normal actually, uh, surprisingly normal given the situation we are in today. And I came back, I came back, I arrived in the back in in, in Philippines on the 9th, uh, uh, late uh, afternoon, early evening. And the first indication things were trying to st uh, starting really to change was that uh, my wife told me that um, that one of her friends had come home from China and he was now in uh, quarantine for two weeks and he's a teacher uh, and he was, uh, you know, basically the schools were closed and, and he was sent back home. And, uh, you know, in the next few days, uh, we all uh, were thinking about, you know, is there something we can do to, uh, you know, get involved at this point in time in 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 uh, in in helping schools, you know, in in Singapore and China and Korea, Taiwan, uh, Hong Kong, because it, it, those were the only places that were kind of uh, having an issue. Uh, on the same week, Thursday, it was the 12th of March, uh, we, we had a notice from our kids' school that on the 13th, Friday the 13th, they would uh, uh, do a dry run of home learning uh, just in case there should be a lockdown. And uh, within, uh, I think, 48 hours of uh, school finishing on Friday, uh, we had a complete lockdown and uh, the kids uh, are still not in school. In fact, I just got notified uh, this morning that the school will resume on August 24th. So uh, 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 for us, we had a quite chaotic experience because what was supposed to be a dry run and then fine tuning, you know, the, 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 the systems and procedures became like that's how we do it. And and uh, uh, it took like everything else has been happening this uh, this time, you know, a few weeks for things to kind of align. But I can still see it's going to be a challenge unless we really help the the schools, you know, bring up the technology that is required. Because right now it's like every teacher has their own CTO trying to figure it out. Uh, and and I don't think that uh, traditionally there has been a strong uh, IT CTO kind of uh, 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 move in schools, uh, at least when it comes to the public schools and many of the schools in Asia as well. So uh, that was my personal experience. And, and of course, now we are in the midst of uh, deploying teams and helping schools all over the region. So uh, I can see a lot of good things happening, but uh, I, 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 we lost, I guess, I guess, around one month trying to figure it out. Not, not so much us, but the schools. Um, uh, so, so that was my personal experience. I, I think uh, Rani has a much wider uh, engagement in this being, you know, uh, in, in, in the middle of the soup, so to speak, you know, in, in that position in Microsoft. And of course, Vasanta mm -hmm. has been quite involved in our education initiatives in Sri Lanka over the last few weeks. So uh, I, mm -hmm. I will uh, leave it to you to, 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 to share your insight as well. Um, I, can, I can go next if... Um... Uh, if that's okay with you, Vasantha. 
Yeah, sure. Go ahead, please. So, yeah. So I think the first thing um, for us as an impact was uh, what is going on? You know, it was a fair bit of panic because in Microsoft, at least, we've been having these conversations about uh, remote learning and home based learning and having the right tools for years. And that's always been part of our strategy. But how this happened was so very sudden and the questions were being asked of us, what are we going to do tomorrow? What are we going to do next week? We had an unprecedented number of requests for large scale support to move our classes online from multiple countries and, and lots of schools and institutions and teachers reaching out. I think what this triggered is the uh, as one of the impacts was that we saw an enormous amount of um, of our education ecosystem partners, um, our own uh, and competitors and ourselves all beginning to try and resolve the one issue, and that is the continuance of uh, learning because of the lockdown, uh, the primary focus with the students and there was a lot of sharing. The impact was staggering, actually, because very quickly um, organizations came together. We saw publishers opening up digital libraries to help our students learn from home. Um, we saw schools becoming a little bit more lenient um, with what tools were being used. Governments relaxed rules and restrictions to share ideas. So I think one of the biggest impacts that we saw was the fact that there was a lot of sharing uh, that happened and people sort of came together because the one purpose here was to continue the students learning. Mm -hmm. I think overnight it, it kind of broke down barriers of what online uh, learning faced for years. Um, and what what however what it hasn't done is solve all the problems and all the answers that online learning itself raises. Uh, for education systems like what's the learning outcomes. But these questions are all being tackled as we speak with very new urgency. So there were gaps as well that we have found which are you know technology gaps, students having limited access or no access in most parts of, of the region, mm -hmm. infrastructure gaps, uh, limited internet, um, but not not as bad, limited internet in terms of learning uh, and devices but not necessarily phones, um, teacher knowledge gaps, content gaps, policy gaps. So there was a lot of gaps, but the wonderful thing about it was that um, everyone was listening and sharing um, to solve the problem, um, which was to, you know, to get our students to continue their learning during the lockdown period. Yeah, so, I, 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 sorry, Vasan, I, I yeah. just wanted to comment on that. I think it was very much a, not a question anymore of an if, right? It's about yes. how, you know, uh, in all these past years, it's been, oh, yeah, we will think about it or if we are going to do that or how can we, how can we possibly give the quality of education we want to give online? But th that is not even the question anymore. Now it is about how can we get this going so the kids don't lose six months. Correct. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, it's, I, I, I do have a, a little bit of a different perspective to the, the two. I mean, I'm not dis, uh, you know disagreeing. I'm 100% agreeing with what you say. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but look at, uh, you know, all this time, the change is the most difficult thing. People mm -hmm. don't like to change. And, uh, and uh, I have uh, seen last was doing a few of these uh, webinars previously. We were talking about uh, who did the digital transformation for businesses, you know, COVID-19. Uh, the same way, I think uh, it applies to everywhere. And uh, uh, now we have been forced to go digital. And, uh, and most of the time we always say, OK, we don't have resources, uh, you know, we don't have this. That's why we can't do this digital transformation. But if you carefully look at the Facebook or, you know, we were looking at some of the numbers, uh, you know, um, in, in, in the back end, when in, in terms of deployment, uh, digital uh, education to students. And 97 of percent of them have some sort of access to Internet and 90% of the photograph of parents, if you see on the on the Facebook today, are ch their children are holding some sort of a device and sitting uh, at home and uh, trying to do something. So I think uh, uh, as educators, as the uh, the policymakers, you know, the bridging the gap, we we miss that on somehow because 
uh, it is a change. The change is difficult. I think that is what I, uh, how do I feel? And uh, mm. that has been demanded now. So there's no way mm. out of this. You're right, um, Vasanta. I think when we look at majority of the requests and we we sort of uh, peel back the onion layers and see what the the real requests are, uh, predominantly they are not necessarily technical projects, but they are like true education transformational project requirements, right? That require quite an extensive change management, as you say, um, and that and see that COVID-19 is an opportunity to transform because it has brought so many things that was in the back burner to the forefront. Mm -hmm. So I completely agree with you there. That's true. Right. And if I could just like uh, add on to to something that uh, uh, Wasantha said, actually, so with me speaking from experience as a parent here in the Philippines, there are still a lot of schools that don't have or has not taken any steps into continuing education. And we're already well, like in technically summer, but the year, uh, the school year ended without any notice of what the next steps would be, et cetera, et cetera. And I think one of the reasons why is um, these schools, they don't have like, as Lars mentioned earlier, like dedicated um, technical people, you know, like, like IT departments or like CTOs. And these are schools, these are private schools as well. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that is, that is something, you know, talking about bridging um, traditional learning with remote learning you know how how can educational institutions start and educations uh, sorry educators and students adopt to this to this um, transition i would say yeah i, I think uh, you know there's a there's a saying you know that we talk when we talk about digital transformation in business we say you know uh, uh, the, the the banks are now no longer positioning themselves as a bank but as an it company pro providing financial services I haven't seen the school yet who is an IT company prov providing educational services. So obviously uh, uh, IT has been seen very much as a kind of enabler. Uh, uh, you know, uh, basically the whole uh, 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 idea of STEM education, preparing the kids for the future, uh, more than kind of emerging them in the day-to-day -day work of actually using those tools to 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 work from home. I mean, I mean, uh, most of us who are who are working from home. I mean, all of us in this call are sitting in our respective homes. Uh, you know, there's none of us who are sitting together in an office, and we are even in you know not only in in different homes. We are in 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 different countries, right? We we are in Philippines, in Singapore, and Sri Lanka right now uh, with this call, and and. Uh, it's 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 just uh, 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 you know a different way of working and and learning that has to be uh, uh, put together, and I think this is the biggest challenge. Uh, you know, Bill Gates was one of the very uh, uh, you know if not the one of the pioneers in terms of getting a computers out there. You know, every office desk and every home should have a computer. But if you have a computer at home now you'll have you know three or four people standing behind that computer and waiting for their turn because they cannot do anything for their school or for their office unless they sit in front of the computer so that's that becomes the next challenge do we really want our kids to sit in front of the pc for 8 hours uh, you know because they're e-learning or how can how can education uh, you know uh, combine the screen time with other things because after school they also have their own private screen time with their games and their social network and stuff. I mean, are we going to expect now in the future we are going to spend, you know, most of our waking hours in, in front of a screen? Mm -hmm. So so education mm -hmm. really needs to push more than just screen time. It, it, it you know, that still need to be the, 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 the kind of the placeholder, but there should still be uh, experiments, you know, things that people or kids do off the screen in terms of group work and stuff that they can still do with, you know, uh, 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 video uh, conferencing tools and, 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 you know, work alone on projects and then uh, mm -hmm. present the project that need to be brought. And I right. think this is the bigger challenge because it's easy to say, okay, do these five modules in Khan Academy uh, today. 
and then you are mm-hmm. gone, right? And mm-hmm. then uh, yeah. you, you, th- that is not really what I think we want. We want them to do maybe one module in one kind of learning and another module mm-hmm. in another uh, learning module, but 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 they need to have that interaction with other kids as well and their hands on, especially when it's younger. Now you are you are uh, your child is five, right? So yes, yes, she's five. It's a completely mm-hmm. different uh, scenario. Uh, Definitely. Uh, my son-in-law just was, uh, started studying, you know, in in uh, he, he's he's uh, becoming a, a construction engineer. So he he went back to school. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, a grown-up have a different way of mm-hmm. being able to manage that than yes. a five-year-old, right? And I have a, I have here at home, you know, and uh, a, a, a twelve-year-old and a eleven-year-old, and uh, it's challenging for them you know but at least there's two of them together but if you just have a single child it's also more challenging like a single parent with a single child right now mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. probably one of the most challenging situations trying to work <laughs> and help your kid as well right so so yeah, yeah. i think that's 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 uh, what we have to think about it's more than just applying technology but it has to be more of a framework i i'm actually keen on hearing that from from you know rani w- what is your take on that what are you how are you going to do this yeah, um, I I hear everything that you have just mentioned, Lars, and that's that's the same questions because when we look at education, often we are either addressing the student or the teacher or the institution. What I think we all need to understand is that the anything will do strategy that might have got us through the first few days and weeks will not sustain us. Absolutely, we need to look deeper to find tools, methods, systems. Um, and solutions that that kind of really meet the needs. And the needs are very, very varied, like Lars, what you just mentioned. Now that we are discovering what those needs are, which also includes the parents, institutions, I think, should take the lead on this with educators because they are often drowning in the daily demands of teaching under this new norm and new paradigm. They are already overloaded and need strategic support. Uh, but you also mentioned the students, and this is an important adoption question for us. We cannot assume that um, just because we might be dealing with the younger generation that they are all automatically digital natives, even when they are they are not automatically digital learners, to your point last, right? Many digitally um, fluent students still struggle to engage, focus, learn, grow, and this is where the pedagogy is really, really important. How we deliver is only half the battle. Uh, How we help them engage is just as important. So online learning, I think, is still a deeply pedagogical process. And we need to listen to the experts and and understand and use a framework um, that allows us to cohesively think about the holistic student and the holistic teacher and, and what we need to help them. Um, in that process and and tools and technology is a, a big part, but it's not the only part. My husband, who's an educator, often tells me the biggest technology, uh, which is the critical technology in the classroom is the teacher themselves, <laughs> because mm-hmm. they are the ones who's facilitating. And yeah. so, yes, it is a framework. We need to look at it holistically and pedagogically. Um, just because it's online doesn't mean pedagogy goes down the wayside. It's more reason that you look at the holistic child to your point. Um, yes, Rani, you know, so, so, so being online and available online only, I think, uh, give some correct. opportunities because every teacher is uh, not the same and every student mm-hmm. is not the same. So, so having, uh, you know, having understood that, I think being digital and being able to de- you know deliver much more um, uh, we can say student focused education student centric education uh, is uh, is the uh, I, I would say that is is the way forward and it will be helped by the technology today what is available so I think uh, this transformation should bring that individual students being able to study on their own pace as well as uh, you know that that should help the, the, the by 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 being able to engage uh, on their own time and follow at the same rates but they are, I, I don't know whether you know it makes sense what I what I said absolutely makes sense because I think um, technology has a, a great insight especially 
when we are talking about um, data and cognitive services and AI. And I know these are all like really big terms when we are trying to tackle COVID and our day to day of trying to get students to be engaged. But I think what this uh, COVID has forced us to do is to say, yes, we are here and we are managing what we need to do day to day, but let's take a step back and look at the whole framework to last point. And your point was to say, you know, how do we use this technology infrastructure or the technology services that we have to help with that personalized learning? And not just for the student to personally learn, but also for the teacher to be able to effectively provide that personal guidance that is required for the students. So yeah, technology is there. Um, I think uh, it, it's just that the adoption of that technology has been very slow and COVID is forcing us to look at all of these technologies in a sustainable manner um, to provide that outcome uh, for the students. So I agree with you totally. I think I think one of the things that uh, um, uh, we have we have seen is that uh, as the ratio of teacher to student has been, um, you know, in 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 uh, in 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 wealthier countries or in in private schools, private education, you mm -hmm. often see a much a, a, a lower ratio to uh, to students uh, yeah. per teacher. But in public school and especially in emerging uh, markets, the ratio is is much higher. We can see something like 40 or 50 students to a teacher. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hope uh, you know we are not going to see that that the going digital will mean that we can have now a hundred students per teacher, but it will help us to go a bit the other way around. Uh, uh, you know that we can we can uh, leverage the technology also available now. Uh, Rani is talking about AI and and you know mm -hmm. how 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 it can help us in education, but 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 definitely there are things that the teacher picks up because mm -hmm. the, the the ratio with with students lower and and mm -hmm. and once you put in AI big data uh, understand the analytics behind learning you will start to see you know behavioral patterns where you need yeah. to pick up a child who is running uh, behind for some reason and you might not have have noticed that in a in a school where there's a, a 40 or 50 students per teacher so 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 obviously having uh, 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 e-learning and having data available uh, uh, helps us to 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 drive a different kind of learning that we can we can we can assist the kids who needs more help in different ways, but we can also let the kids who are uh, you, you know um, uh, who, who find it easy to work with a specific topic let them go ahead because we don't need to bring everybody at the same pace because we are not going to present the topic at the same time to a, the same group of people. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so there are opportunities in this. And I think this is basically what we have been trying to advocate in in the last few years. And, and this is what's going to happen now. Now, digital transformation is being pushed uh, in education. And, and I, I, I don't think that there's any going back. I mean, uh, I, I don't think anybody is expecting that in six months or nine months we'll be back to normal kind of school. Um, yeah. And, and uh, uh, we have seen uh, one of the issues we had uh, have had in Philippines uh, is uh, that uh, we did not have a, a, a reasonable school year. We start uh, we started with a number of uh, typhoons that cancelled mm -hmm. schools for many people, and then we had a volcano eruption that mm -hmm. cancelled school for a couple of weeks, and then we went into COVID. So. Going forward, we, while we are expecting COVID to to kind of ease out and disappear over the next uh, uh, months or maybe year, at least we know that uh, uh, weather is still going to be there. Volcanoes and eruptions and earthquakes and other kind of disasters are still going to be around, and and being able to work from home or study from home during that time will be uh, important. And maybe schools will even find that. It's 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 good for the kids to study at home a couple of days per week or one day a week or something like this. So similar, mm -hmm. like we are applying that in the workforce. We are saying, okay, uh, 50% you are in the office and 50% you work from home. Maybe 
working from home as a student has other benefits as well. So so going forward, it should probably be a combination of the two. Maybe we can get the 22 to, to one teacher ratio because it's not the same 20 kids every day. So, uh, uh, you know, the other 20 kids might be working at home on their own project. So there's a lot of interesting things that can happen here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, Dr. Rani, do you have anything to add to that? No, I think um, all the things that uh, we are discussing, we, we are already seeing some really good examples of how um, COVID has already started um, getting our decision makers at the country level, at the institution level, yeah. and at the learning level already having these conversations. So I think um, a, a structured platform, as you've put up on the screen, is I think is the key. And that structured platform so that we are not making um, financial investment and learning outcome and skill based decisions um, independently. We're not making those decisions without a framework. It has to be a framework because it, for us to get the maximum out of every dollar that is invested in education, it has to be underpinned by what it is that we are trying to achieve. Um, as a learning outcome uh, for yeah. those students, our future employees, um, right. so that, you know, um, yeah, we are taking that into consideration, whether it be infrastructure or change management or right. Invest, right. investing in teachers. Mm. Okay, awesome. So since, you know, we talked about what, what um, some uh, edu some schools are lacking and we're talking about like the plan or how to plan moving forward. Now let's talk about what is happening already. Now can you cite some best practices currently being done globally and specifically in Asia? So Dr. Rani, I, I'm pretty sure this is something that you could really, <laughs> um, you really have insight on. Yeah. yeah, thanks for asking that because I think as we all know, education is one industry that we learn from best practices so deeply and educators and education uh, stakeholders are always willing to share. Now, I did, uh, I, I did have some um, examples in New Zealand where uh, but I also have some very, very crystal examples that's happening in our, our immediate neighborhood as well. So some of the best practices in New Zealand where they have taken a whole lot, they, they've looked at the student and the student's learning journey uh, in a day or in a week. And they've said, how can we use technology in such a way that um, we can not only impact what the student learns, um, what work ready skills we need to provide them, but we are able to track the outcome of what learnings that they have and then also work out. OK, if we are teaching the students and the teachers uh, certain tools for collaboration. Is that collaboration positively affecting um, the students grade outcomes or the students uh, confidence in being able to collaborate with other students. So they've used many of these technologies like um, Flipgrid, um, Graph APIs, um, to be able to develop small apps using Minecraft, you know, all of these tools where the pedagogical thinking has gone behind it. And on the other side, they are measuring whether the students outcome is aligned with what the country requires under a framework and also as an individual person whether they are becoming more confident whether they are more articulate are they collaborating meaningfully as in talking in team groups so they have done that as a awesome best practice in new zealand um, and that also goes uh, with language boundaries of making sure that that translates not just from a technical and their regular language competencies, but also in maths and Maori, Maori language, right? And then you look, take another example like in, in, in Thailand, when the Thailand government ordered a complete shutdown of all on-campus activities in universities, for example, with only two days of warning, that left majority of the students and staff unprepared. They were unprepared for the new circumstances, especially in terms of technical um, aspects. So the ministry solution was that they were going to immediately deploy, deploy the Office 365A1 platform and they were going to use the teams to support remote learning with a very quick and simple uh, deployment assisted by our very skilled partners 
who have the competencies to be able to do that. And they did it beyond simple video conferencing and included class notebooks, support on assignments, grading, and much more. And the outcome of that specific um, push that COVID made has meant that about 150 universities across the countries are now virtually able to do interactive virtual classrooms. And as I said, it's not just about video conferencing, it's about learning. And that support kind of covered 60,000 educators and 2 million students uh, in such a short period of time. And I've got many other examples, like if you look at um, uh, in, in um, Malaysia, for example, the announcement of the uh, COVID lockdown led schools to temporarily close. It really disrupted all the states at varying levels. So with remote learning being the only viable option for them, the ministry urgently wanted to train uh, teachers on a large scale. So we came in with the Digital Classroom Administration, which is the ministry's uh, DCA, they call it. They rose a challenge to by con conducting about a daily webinars to help teachers in the new skills. And we help them with our productivity suite once again with how to use video conferencing and how to bring that for immediate um, outcome for the for the ministry. Now the training um, webinars that was conducted uh, by the ministry and us and our partners meant that we were able to not only cut costs for the ministry during times of COVID, but the training also recorded uh, was recorded uh, because. Um, you know, sometimes students can't, uh, don't have access and they can't attend this so they can do it later. They were recorded and uploaded onto the ministry's learning portal. I think they call it Ruang Ilumu. All the sessions were accessible by all 430,000 teachers across the nation at any time, no matter where they were, whether they were accessing it from a phone or a PC uh, or a shared PC. And we saw like 25,000 teachers at a time trying to conduct and use these tools. And the great thing, and I'll finish with this, Ara, was that the, the show of what happens when you can enable teachers and get them as part of the solution meant that right now, um, the Digital Classroom ad Administration in the ministry is working with us to collaborate on a new program called eClass with daily online classes targeted for 900,000 students sitting for the exams that are looming very shortly. So, you know, this is just some examples when push comes to shove and we need to find a solution, we will find a solution, you know. Thank you very so much for that. Doc, because Connie. I've got a ton of examples, <laughs> but I can stop now. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Now, my question for um, Lars and Wasanta. Now, uh, what technologies do you think, as uh, you know, industry leaders, uh, should educational institutions adopt, and how would these these tools or or technologies help um, these schools and institutions during these times? Uh, yeah. Well, I think I think. Uh, um, be beyond the beyond the um, the framework that uh, uh, Rani is talking about, um, you know, there, there there is a there's a infrastructure as well that need to be put in place, which is very important. You know, not only the students they need to have, you know, uh, a, 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 a PC or whatever we can call it, a laptop or something, but but the teachers also need at their end to be properly equipped. You know. Uh, uh, not only again with a laptop, but with, you know, a, a, an ability to do presentations on a board and, you know, so, 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 uh, uh, you know, uh, that, that I think is, 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 is the, the, the bigger challenge. I think, I think we are always keen to find like a technical solution to everything, especially because, uh, you know, that, that's our business. But, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, beyond this, I think the biggest challenge here is the digital teacher. You know, what does a digital teacher look like? Uh, where's the digital teacher uh, education? Not from Microsoft, not from us, not from uh, a vendor side, but where is the, 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 the education system that brings out these new type of teachers? You know, how, how long time are we going to, 
to to wait to see them starting coming out. I, I don't know if there are any such programs, but but definitely uh, uh, distance learning is 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 already been happening for a long time. I think we we are, we are facing some challenges with our internet connectivity and with our number of, of devices that people need to be actually able to get on the system. Uh, so so that's 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 more of the infrastructure challenge I see. Uh, being able to, uh, you know, broadcast things on TV or, uh, you know, other type of, of, of channels is important as well. Um, but but the, 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 the digital transformation is, is quite uh, uh, wholesome. It starts with, you know, getting everything organized first and I think this was the bigger challenge. There's some comments here, you know, in, in, in our chat that, you know, there the, 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 the was a, a, a kind of a, a, a chaos going on, right? That, that uh, and I, I think also Rani was uh, uh, mentioning that in the first couple of stages. So we, we talk about this in the first stage of digital transformation, which is digitizing or fixing the past, you know, getting things connected and, and putting things online is just the first step. And then starting to develop uh, proper uh, methods and proper tools for education. And then the digital transformation will happen where the learning outcome will be improved. Because right now, I think we are just trying to catch up. You know, what are we going to do? There's another comment here. What are we going to do with exams? You know, our traditional education system is based on the fact that we we, 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 we put a school bus in front of the house and then we shuttle our kids to a school and leave them there for uh, uh, five to ten hours, depending on their age. And then we shuttle them back and then, uh, you know, then they sit at home and do some work as well. So, so, so how are all the and then when they have exams, they go there and sit in a controlled environment where there's a uh, you know somebody watching over their shoulder to make sure they're not cheating and 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 how is all of that going to transform that that it's it's a big mouthful that that has to be eaten at the same time right yeah and so i think last you know yeah. i want to just add one something on the top uh, of what you said uh, so the, the new new norm uh, where, where the, the students are joining uh, the learning, at least I, I would say digital learning, not e-learning. So in the digital learning, uh, mm -hmm. there will be multiple uh, platforms, multiple devices that uh, owned by them, owned by someone else. Uh, it will be used to, to join uh, this stream. And the security uh, is an aspect that has to be uh, really uh, also has to be taken care of. So if you ask what new technologies and what areas that we should be focusing on, once the platforms are there, you need to look at uh, the, 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 the security uh, in terms of uh, uh, not the physical security, but uh, talking about how uh, the students are being protected from uh, various different influences that can come along with the digital uh, paradigm. So I think that's a, that's an area, uh, again, uh, we need to keep the focus on uh, all the yeah. educators as well. Yeah, and I, I will also concur. And I say when learning was done in the classroom, it was also managed in the classroom, right? Some schools used various portals to help, uh, but not many leveraged them to the extent that they need to do now. Because yes. learning portals, for example, are now needed to do more than they ever did, and not all are up to the task. Because some of the learning portals might not have, you know, their, their objective is to uh, dis, uh, deliver content for consumption but their objective wasn't to personalize that content. So mm. when we are looking at learning portals, we need to take into account what Lars said even earlier about how it's going to provide personalized learning and what Vasanta is saying about security because we are expecting these technologies to do more. We know they have to do more. We've always said that they, we have to do more. COVID has shown us we absolutely have to do more. So I think one thing I would encourage institutions to do is to consider how much more their existing technologies can do for them and to know what others are doing with their portals and their interfaces and the multi-touch that I say needs to work. You know, it's not about one video conference that happens to a student. It's about how do we do our quizzes? How do we do our assignments? And how does all of that track uh, against that student's identity. And there's, there's a fair amount of that that we need to think through as a framework conversation. 
And, and part of my role is helping institutions get in touch with a variety of industry providers. And I think my advice to everyone would be, you know, whenever you're thinking about it, take into, um, you, you know, keep in mind that it isn't just about one item, what one interaction. It is also about what that interaction influences in many interactions that a student or teacher does and do the research to find the right portals which is safe for our students and teachers to use. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you very much for that, Dr. Rani and uh, Wasantha and Lars. Now, uh, just a quick one because we have a few questions here from the audience that are, I think are really, really interesting. Uh, one question here, um, quick turning to e-learning without any pre-arrangements has created some issues in Sri Lankan education sector. Most of the students are staying home without any smart devices. I just need to get your idea. And I think, you know, with this question, it also applies here in the Philippines and I'm sure in other Asian countries as well. A lot of students don't have smart devices to use. So let's uh, let's really let's hear your thoughts about this. Yeah, I think I think uh, um, this brings uh, uh, the, 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 the challenge of the home as well. You know, because it's not only the kids who are home, it's also the parents. So obviously the mm -hmm. parents are playing a much bigger role in this immediate situation than maybe a few months back. You know, in a few months back, we would ask the kids, OK, do you need help with your homework? And if they are older, they will say no. And if they're younger, they will say no. And then, you know, we'll wait for the teachers to say yes, they need help. But but in, in most of the cases, our our support as a parent is about helping them with their homework. Now we kind of became the uh, assistant teacher, uh, you know, to make sure they're on track, make sure that they're doing their stuff. And and some kids are good at it and some kids are not good at it. So so uh, it, it the, the role of the parents suddenly became much different, which of course also so 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 uh, um, to bring back to to go back to the question is that this this it has been chaotic, not only for the kids, but also for the parents and also for the for the teachers, you know, because most of us had very little uh, warning, as Rani was saying, you know, in Thailand, they gave two days. I think here in Philippines, they didn't give any. It was over the weekend that they announced that from yeah. on Monday, there's going to be a lockdown and, and we didn't even get any time to prepare. And on Monday, the teachers could not even go to school and, and work together to try to figure it out. So so uh, uh, there has been no backup plan almost anywhere. I think, uh, I, I don't know anywhere where they had a backup plan saying, OK, what happens if our schools are closed for whatever reason? Uh, um, so so I completely agree with that comment. I think I think it's only, not only Sri Lanka, all the countries that I know of have had challenges with this and the younger the student, the bigger challenges. And also, Lars, I think, um, you know, I, I am, I am uh, fairly educated and I have a son who goes to an international school. I have become, like you said, a, a teacher's assistant. And when he sits there and he is looking at his grade five maths, to be honest, I have no idea what he's doing in grade five. Try to try seventh grade math. I know, right? <laughs> and I'm seeing not there, going, I, Rani, I'm sorry, but it's not going to get easier. <laughs> it's all right. uphill from here. <laughs> so I'm oh, sitting oh, there. Oh, thank God my kids are big, you know. So uh, how I'm, I'm the fine. hell am I going to help him? <laughs> right? I, yeah, I have no idea how I'm going to help him. So the 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 person who asked that question, you are absolutely right. And whilst I don't have solutions for what, how we will handle that, what I will say is that this is letting us know that we have a serious gap in the way we educate our students. If our students and our kids are needing to go to a location and that is the only location that they learn from, we are never prepared for any emergencies. So, um, and one other thing that I would say was the question uh, Lars po uh, pointed it out earlier. He mentioned about television. There was one country that actually ramped up their learning immediately and that was Korea. Now I understand um, Korea is a well-developed uh, country, but the reality is they, did, they weren't prepared to get to all the students through their devices because they are fairly uh, inward looking when it comes to cloud technologies. 
what they did do is their education broadcasting service. They immediately put a lot of content on their education broadcasting service and went to 2 million students in less than two days. So um, that was a phenomenal feat. It, it's an interesting uh, 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 thing. I just I, I just came to my mind when you mentioned that. I, I forgot the name, but there is some kind of a famous celebrity uh, science teacher or science guy in the US that used to be only on TV. And it's like 20 years ago or something like this. And uh, I, I I watched, uh, I think it was a Netflix uh, documentary or something about this guy. And uh, now he's he's kind of got celebrity status and he's he's going around to all the schools and, and all the kids want to have selfies with him. And some people are questioning, you know, if he's really a real scientist, uh, because, you, you know, technically I think he's an engineer. But he's talking about evolution and stuff like that. Now, when I told my kids uh, about this guy, they, yeah, yeah, we know this guy because our teacher is showing those videos in our classroom. So actually, this kind of education is not new. You know, if you if 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 you watch something like Big Bang Theory, you can see they all adore some uh, science teachers mm -hmm. that were you know shown on TV and were able to capture the kids you know on a Saturday morning with uh, some experiments and all crazy stuff going on, right? But it's interesting to see now that the the in classroom education actually became a teacher showing the kids that video that their parents probably saw on TV on a weekend, right? So it's we just have to mm. go back and do something that we're already doing before. And, and we need to get the, the uh, you know, uh, the, the right people to deliver it. So it's going to be interesting and inspiring and things like this. But we are going to miss out on, uh, you know, uh, the classroom experiment, you know, burning your finger on the Brunton burner and the uh, uh, dropping a glass on the floor and all those things that we need to do as well. But but definitely, mm -hmm. if you have to bridge in a, an emergent situation, we're not talking about that, that the kids will never go back to school, right? We are talking mm -hmm. about will they go back to school sooner and later and what are we going to do in between? Definitely, TV has a big role to play here, and 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 uh, TV not necessarily being on the physical TV, but uh, like even like mm -hmm. how Khan Academy has grown up, you know, uh, an an inspiring educator who has built up, uh, you know, something around education there. So there's a lot of opportunities to do things differently, and and and, and TV and radio podcasting still has a big role to play. Mm -hmm. And I, I was also happy to see, I think uh, Rani mentioned earlier about, you know, some of the companies uh, are, uh, releasing, uh, uh, you know, open source or kind of uh, giving their books for free from Harry Potter to Paulo Coelho and others have been, uh, you know, listing their books for free to download. And, and uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. one of the ebook uh, providers have also given free access to many books that kids can listen to, uh, you know, uh, uh, online. And they used to have to pay, you know, membership for that. But during this time, they can do it for free. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of things. There's a lot of opportunities to do things differently. But definitely TV will have a role in this because that will reach, you know, communities yeah. that don't have devices and don't have Internet, right? Yes, yes. By the way, uh, Lars, I think I remember the the science show that you were talking about earlier. Bill Nye, the science guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Is science guy. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So even you know yeah, him, right? Yeah, Bill Nye. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yes, so, yes. Yeah, and, and so, uh, uh, yeah, yeah they, they, it, it, you know, when I told my kids and I told you earlier that like in fifth and seventh grade, they know the guy, you know, it's not from TV, but they know him from their teachers actually showing that program in the classroom so yeah. <laughs> it's a bit awkward actually that it goes so, that so way so still the uh, tv is valid no last you know so is, is, is the tv yeah. that we use at this moment uh, the tv is still a valid yeah. medium uh, we have seen also you know uh, two channels now dedicated uh, by the government uh, for students uh, learning uh, but i think uh, there should be more and uh, i think to, as of today as uh, the first question you know when i when i say that a lot of students are staying home without any smart devices so that's I think the only way to address this one would have been the TV. The reason is that no devices are or no imports of devices are happening, even if you have money today. And uh, but you have a local manufacturer in Sri Lanka, so at least yes, you know, of they, course, they, they can, yes, they of can course. help. 
because I think uh, uh, e even uh, not only imports are happening, I, in many places we could not get devices for both business and education, right? Because they are manufactured in China and China was closed for the first yeah. couple of months of the year. Now maybe things are picking up, but at least in Sri Lanka, you know, there is a, a, a company they're doing locally assembled uh, uh, educational uh, PCs and laptops and stuff. So it's, it's it should be possible, but of course they need to get their components from somewhere else. I guess yeah. you're not making all the components. They are more assembly than than anything. But if they have a proper stock and so on, they should be able to 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 help at least. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's also the time to get outside. And if you are living in a house, go in the the garden and plant some seeds, grow some plants, and try to see how that works. And I've seen all kind of stories of parents, you know, asking the kids to clean the house and uh, all the things that we kind of shielded <laughs> them away from because they have to sit and study. Now uh, maybe they need some hands-on experience with something as well so let them Other get life that skills. At least for these months right <laughs> that's right yes <laughs> yeah okay yeah, yeah. And I, th I think there's a there's also an aspect of homeschooling that really takes into play right mm. yeah a lot of like um homeschooling and and uh hands-on uh tutoring sort of uh from parent or or guardian uh, for kids. So I think that's uh, another thing. Uh, now we have another question here. Uh, I think this is this is really interesting as well. Um, can you share more stories of successful shift to remote learning and how did they go about it? Um, I can I can take that. Now we have several. We are collecting more data and, and I'm talking about um, all of these cases where we've helped in almost all of our countries in, in uh, Asia Pacific um, for COVID. So COVID driven stories, there's many. Um, I can share with you maybe one more and then I will say that um, keep, keep uh, um, your connections with uh, Sanjay very close because we will share all of this in, in a very good document um, so that um, you can share some of these best practices. So for example, let me look. In Vietnam, the schools in Vietnam, uh, due to a minimum community spread of COVID, um, the students and the staff needed an online platform. So to help the students continue their studies. So my, the Vietnam Ministry of Education and Training uh, deployed video conferencing uh, nationwide. Now they needed a lot of technical support, so they they came came to us, and in about 27 hours, uh, in collaboration, with the city um, and the local telco um, uh, and us, we were able to deploy to 200 schools across all levels of learning. Now the outcome from that and it, it took a mammoth effort by all of our partners in, in, in Vietnam as well. Uh, the outcome from it was that uh, Haiphong City now has a, uh, a very trusted flat safe platform because they were on a platform where they had some security breaches um, to deliver their online learning to their students. Not only that, the Ministry of Education and Training was also supporting all the other provinces as we speak to replicate that deployment for their students. Now, I, I say it in such small words, but in even then we are just trying to address the immediate issue. Um, the success, the true success, if you ask me about remote learning will come in the days, in the months, uh, in the near months, not too long in the future, where we are taking a step back from addressing, giving content and learning to the students today and then start thinking about what the outcomes are and that goes back to the, the lots of information that we shared today is to think deeply about okay now we fix this problem and that's we can consider that a success because um, education um, uh, you know distributing education for the students happen but whether that is actually giving them a learning outcome is the next question. And I think we'll be working and looking at all the examples that we have and taking it to the next level to share some of that best practices that has happened because COVID has forced us to look at the facts.
the way they should be, which is learning outcome for the students. So I have lots of them in the interest of time. I won't share all of them, but I will share them later with you. Please reach out to Sanjay. Great, thank you very much for that, Dr. Rani. Now we actually have one question here, uh, just came in, but it's really interesting, I would say. And I think this this goes for uh, Wasantha and Lars. Um, it's a fact that digital transformation, AI and robotics has caused a lot of unemployment. If current education model is changed and we start adapting digital transformation, in future there won't be the need of as much teachers as we have per school now. Just wanted to know about the predictions on what might be the possibilities of this of the situation. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so I, I think I I uh, I hinted at that earlier. If if you if you will think that okay, I need to have every student in front of a teacher all the time, uh, then uh, we don't have a good teacher to student ratio right now globally. If you take the average, it's 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 not good enough. Now, if you can if you can say, OK, kids works sometime or half the time without a teacher and the other time with a teacher, you can effectively give a better teacher to student ratio. So you can go two ways with this. You can say, OK, then we can save half of the teachers or you can say then we can increase the uh, quality of education. And and I I, I think, uh, you know, going back to kind of the core of this issue, the, the, the challenge we have is the skill sets that are needed are not being taught enough. So there is a lot of 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 gap that need to be bridged with, uh, you know, science, technology uh, uh, and math, right? Uh, engineering and math. These are the tools that kids need to be able to prosper in the future. Uh, and of course, now we can see, you know, uh, it should probably be double M because medicine is an important part of it. So science and medicine might be the same, but, but you know, we need more nurses, we need more te uh, teachers, we need more doctors. Uh, uh, and and I don't I don't see this this is a political decision more or less. It's not a matter of like an efficiency level that we have in manufacturing or in the office where we can automate processes. This is a this is a political decision of the quality of education and 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 how many teachers we want to get engaged. And if we want to save money there, I think that's that that will be uh, tough in the future. It's, it's an investment that uh, uh, needs to be made and continue to be made. And in education, I don't see that uh, that uh, these tools are going to be replacing teachers, but supporting teachers and, and developing better education. Uh, and uh, that's my my opinion. So I, sure I, I, yeah, I will also add something last, you know, so I think the digital educators versus uh, teachers are two different, uh, uh, you know, type of people in my opinion. So if 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 on the other hand, if you take for an example, like Khan Academy existed for the last uh, 10 years, you know, or more than that. So if uh, and it's free and uh, if everything can be learned just out of the web, for students to become, you know, uh, nobody would have gone to school, but I don't think this is going to be mm. a, a true. And then if you take uh, from my personal experience into my career, uh, document management uh, in uh, year 2000, you know, we were saying it is going to be paperless world. And uh, soon, you know, when we digitize everything, but it never happened, you know, all the paper did not go away. Still, we have more paper than uh, uh, I, uh, you know, we find that every other day. So mm. having said mm. that, the digital, educators a role is going to change you know they are not going to be the traditional teachers digital educators still require because there are going to be assessments there are uh, rubric assessments to grading and all those things has to happen and then somebody has to manage the lms so their their role is going to change but of course definitely these teachers uh, are not going to go away there'll be uh, th there'll be a different uh, or better role for them uh, in in that and they will use material, uh, maybe uh, uh, digital material to teach students. I concur. I think um, this is an age old question. As we see modernization and digitization, what's the role of a teacher? And as a teacher myself, I can tell you that 
uh, to last point, the ratio that we see of student to teacher is appalling if you look at it as a global standard. So that's number one. We need more teachers. Uh, there. And, and when you look at the role of a teacher, I think we can have isolated conversations about digital versus what a role of a teacher is. And we still see the role of a teacher who is not just giving them content um, and consumption. The role of a teacher is also to build uh, higher order critical thinking and all of these um, skills, life skills that they need. So the teacher provides context. Um, there was a quote that I read long time ago, let technology answer all of the questions and I as a teacher will provide context to my students. And I think that isn't going to go away. Um, is if, if anything, we need more teachers to be able to provide that personalized context for students because we are leaving our precious children to become holistically prepared, uh, not just smart, not just intelligent and factual, but also be conceptually able to apply those things and that we still need teachers to do. All right, thank you very much for that, Dr. Rani, Wasanta, and Lars. So unfortunately, uh, we don't have any more time, but we encourage everyone to send in other questions uh, or concerns to our email. Now, uh, once again, thank you very much uh, to our speakers. I'm sure our audience learned a lot about digital and remote learning in the education sector. Now, if you want to activate remote learning for your school, you can try free O365 A1 for education. Just shoot us an email at aliana at techoneglobal.com and we'll help you set up. Now, again, thank you very much to our speakers and thank you very much, guys, for tuning into this webinar. And we look forward to having you on the next one. Have a great day, everyone, and stay safe. Thank, thank you, you very everybody. Much. Thank you, Ara. Thank, thank you, Rani. Thanks, Ara. Thank you, guys. And last.